Okay, so let's just uh, recap our theme today. So we are going to talk more about the API ecosystem and data interchange. Most of the topic today should be around these topics. So pens your agenda wisely today. And then uh, let, let's try to welcome our first uh, keynote speaker. So Dr. To Chan, he will be talking about unleash the power of big data with API collaboration. And he is the associate professor of practice in management at CUHA Business School. So uh, well, let's welcome uh, Dr. To Chan. Patrick, good morning, everyone. So excited to be here. So I think API is a very important topic for everyone, not just in Hong Kong, but around the world. Because yeah, of, yeah, thank you so much, Patrick. Can you hear me okay? I think I yeah, saw yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I think, yeah, yeah, let's try to, uh, I think we, we hear your voice loud and clear, and then we will try to get your uh, slide on screen first. Yeah, thanks to uh, Dr. To Chan for his support. Yeah, right. yeah, we can see your screen here. So I pass the time to you. So thanks again. Good, good. Good morning. Good morning again. Thank you, Patrick. I'm ex excited to be here and particularly hear about the initiative <clears throat> Patrick just mentioned about, like women in API. And in the in the following section, you guys were going to talk about the open banking, uh, developer community, and API interchange. I think this is a very important topic. So look forward to that. But for me, I think as a start for today, for everyone, so I'm going to talk about the topic like uh, make customer journey joyful with big data and API. Because at the end of the day, customer journey should be in our, the first thing in our agenda, not necessarily the data and API. So how we can put them together, how does it relevant to each other? So we'll talk about it today. But before that, let me introduce myself. Uh, as Patrick introduced me, I'm an associate professor of uh, CU Hong Kong Business School. Uh, on the other hand, I also very active in the um, innovation and technology industry. I am the chairman and principal advisors for a few uh, AI, big data and fintech startup in Asia, uh, particularly in Hong Kong and China, particularly. And also I was the uh, senior management in Cyberport, HSBC, IBM, Oracle, and King D. So that's basically my background. Currently, I'm still very active uh, in the innovation technology area. So you might see me in some of the mentoring uh, sections, some of the competition judges and things like that. So uh, particularly in the FinTech and AI area, which is uh, the one I'm uh, most uh, interested in and also uh, familiar with. Okay, so that's my background, and, and some of you may be appearing here, like in some hackathons, competition in the banking area, retail area, so on and so forth. So I'm sure that I know uh, so some of you in Hong Kong. All right, let's go to the topic today. So I'm going to take you through three major points today because we only have like 20 minutes or so. So I'll take you through the very key important points and set the scene for today. The first one I'm going to talk about the business model. So uh, every one of you, if I ask you what's a business model, probably you have different answers. So some of you will think that right, business model is how to make money. True, it's part of it, but it's not all of it. So we'll talk about business model. More importantly, how does it relate to API? Today we're talking about API. So why we need to mention about business model and saying that this is the key. So we'll talk about that. The second thing is the role of big data and API. So in order to create or make our business model relevant and competitive, big data and AI play a vital uh, role. So we'll talk about this uh, in the second point. And the last but not least, we'll talk about the customer-centric API design. So those are the three points I'll take you through in the next 20 minutes. Okay, let's get it started. So business model is the key for success, right? So you guys are all in the API area, I'm sure of that. And some of you are in the definitely in the uh, digital transformation uh, you know, journey. So business model is very important, no matter where you're coming from the API world, or you're coming from the business transformation world, or you're coming from the management perspective. So I give you a check in the morning. Maybe it's too early in the morning. You're still eating, eating your breakfast. That's the uh, advantage of doing an uh, online section, right? You can do it in parallel processing. 
you can still enjoy your dinner and uh, not dinner <laughs> breakfast and coffee right and uh, so you can also learn something together so i'll give you some um you know things to think about right this is the uh, phillips phillips is very great company right and they have a lot of invention and innovation all right we look at the uh, phillips lighting so their core product is the bulbs right they're providing this hardware to around the whole world and everybody loves it because the brand because of the durability and because of the price performance so they have been already the king in this world producing the bulb effectively and making uh, it useful to customers but what's next to them right so if i ask you if if you were philips lighting how are you going to change your business model in the digital economy? So the, if you flip the coin of the question is what? So what kind of new competition, what kind of new situation, competition they're facing? Otherwise, they will not change. Just keep the status quo, right? Because they're doing so well. Everybody buy from them. So that definitely something is happening to force them to change. Then this is the driving force. But what is the direction they need to change to? Right, some of you may think that well, maybe I find a even cheaper place to produce the hardware, so we'll become more competitive in terms of price. Why well, some of you may think that well, maybe we develop new some new market, new channels, things like that. Well, that may be true, but more importantly, your competitor also can do that. And also, if you want to have even more growth on the top of just selling hardware, so what are you going to do? Right. So if I give you a time to discuss, right, definitely you have different answers. But what Philips do is really, really change the business model. The question they ask is, what kind of customer do we have? What they really need or what their really their pain point is. So if you ask several questions, the people will stimulate all the people think about. They are not just buying a piece of hardware they are buying something to address their pain and needs. What is that? What's the, pain, what's the pain point of their customers? It's lighting. Why do people need bulbs? Because they need lighting. But why they need lighting? Ask several questions before you can dig out the real pain point. Why they need lighting? Why do they need lighting? Because they need to work. They need to live. So they have lighting, they can continue to work, they have lighting, they can continue to live, right? So that is the real need. So what Philips do is to change the business model called light as a service. Just like everybody in the software area, like you guys, right? We talk about SaaS model. So in for Philips, they create a model called last model, light as a service. So I'm not selling you hardware, right? For your building, if you spend $5 million for electricity every month, I'll take just half of it. Right, and then I will guarantee all of your lighting, right? For example, and make sure that it, they won't go go of order, right? So basically, it's by subscription model. They can provide all these hardware and replacement for them. So at the end of the day, they keep the lighting on every day and every second. So by making that is to change the business model. More importantly, they add in a lot of IOTs around all these lighting systems. And then they can capture the data and then they can monetize the data to become a energy management uh, system so they can make money out of data more importantly at the end of the day the business model is not just keep getting more revenue but more importantly is how they can address the need of the customer so this is an example i want to bring up no matter what api you're writing right what is what is your value add to your business model or you can even think through about how you can make use of api to really address the pain point of your customer better than before better than your customer are you solving the problem of the customers right so that is the um you know the starting point i would like to uh, illustrate with this example right so if you look at all these technologies from very beginning, uh, like five, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, 
uh, from machines to uh, information system to allow AI, blockchain, all that. Technology is important, all the blue boxes. So more importantly is how you can create a business model that work. So you look at from the VC perspective. So this guy, Bob, right? So he's a famous uh, VC guy. So he fails, he said he fails before because they just look at the technologies. When they see more success, they are actually looking at business model more uh, seriously. Right, so you look at the FinTech area, right? Why we have so many successful FinTech companies and so hot these days. So we are doing unbundling before. We unbundled in a bank. So for example, the bank, you know, used to have everything, right? From lending to saving to investment. So all these FinTech companies, startups, they actually unbundle these services and do it better than the bank. For example, I just do lending. I just do payment but it's much better than a bank. So it's unbundling the service is not for the sake of unbundling. It's for the sake of addressing the needs much better than the bank, right? So you're seeing that this is the, the way why fintech companies are doing well, because they focus on an area, uh, they understand the pain point in that area of the customers, and they dig deeper and using technology to solve all this problem nicely than the bank. So you, so what I want to bring out is I mentioned business model 11 times already, I think from the beginning, but what is a business model? So you have some understanding of technology. You have some understanding of innovation, but business model is not just technology. It's not just making money. It's how you can create value for your customer, right? Making use of innovation and technologies. So if you want to create value for customers, you got to, understand the pain point, right? So this is the first thing, very important thing. But more importantly, a business model is understand the pain point, they create the right value for the customer. You are capable to deliver the value. That's why technology is very important, right? So you have to deliver it by using new methods, new ways. Technology is a very good example. And then at the end of the day, we are not doing charity, right? So once you create value and solve the problem for the customer, once you are capable to deliver the, the value, you need to find a way to capture the value. That means your, what's your revenue model, how you can make money, how you can scale, right? So those are the things just like uh, when we're doing the food delivery these days. So these people have the strong need to have that food because of the COVID-19. So how you deliver it? You use the sharing economy. A lot of people, they're looking for jobs, right? And then you have the technology to have apps. So those are the things you put together. At the end of the day, you have a business model, have a commission and also that uh, to make, a mon make money out of this business model as well. So this is the first part talking about why business model is so important and is why what is the business model is not just making money. All right, let's go to the second part. So how we can make use of big data and AI to create a sound business model. So you look at all these literatures, I don't need to introduce any more. Data is the king. Data is the soil, you know, electricity, the oil of the new economy. So look at all these companies right now. They are very uh, leading company. They do not have other assets except data. So data is very important, not necessarily the heavy asset before, like hardware building, you know, factories. So look at Airbnb, crazy, right? They listed a few months ago. Now their valuation is over 100 billion US dollar. It's higher than all these leading hotel chains combined it. So why they're so successful? Because they treat data is the voice of their customer. They train everyone in their company, not just IT and data people, everyone in the company about data. So if you want to create a very good API, really. So if you do not understand data or put in this way, your data literacy is not strong enough. It's very hard for you to have a good API. All right. So you look at Airbnb, once they do that, they are doing everywhere in every corner of the Airbnb, they're making use of data. So this is some of the example here. So in Hong Kong, particularly in the fintech area, you look at all these famous fintech companies like Bowtie, you know, WeLab, Akomo, and Ping An, um, you know, Virtual Bank. 
you look at this as the, oh, this is look at it's the marketing thing, right? But more importantly, why they are better than other people? They can do same marketing uh, campaign because they are good because not just marketing, but more importantly is the data capability behind that, right? All this AI and big data capability. And you look at the uh, the biggest one in China, right? Like BATJ, like all these four companies are making use of data well. And then they step into the fintech areas because they have a way to monetize the data by converting their business into fintech. And I'm talking about before, fintech is unbundling the bank services and do it better than the traditional bank. But API do a very good job. It's very essential for the digital strategy, what we call from competition to collaboration, right? Now we call it rebundling. At the end of the day, the, op the objective is to make our customer happy. But before that, when we do unbundling, we also want to make the customer happy, but it's not enough. It's better than traditional bank, but it's not enough. Now we need to work together to collaborate fintech companies and banks and insurance company all together and make our customer happy to create a business model we talk about. On one hand, create value for the customer. You are capable to deliver it and you have a way to make money, right? Look at the, uh, I think in the uh, next section, you probably learned about this is the Hong Kong MA Open API framework. Previously, you do it alone, right? The bank can have some internal KPI for their own application to address the customer need. It's far, far away than enough. Now we're making use of the API you know, framework. We can open it up, not just for ourselves, but also the third party so that we can collectively we bundle it together to make our customer even better or in my terms is create a much better business model so we can create a lot more like comparison site product opening multi uh, banking and payment asset so hong kong ma actually have a schedule for all the banks licensed bank to uh conform with all these api standard and open it up to the third party but the other good news from Hong Kong MA is they have a FinTech 2025 uh, roadmap and strategies to help all the banks in Hong Kong to be much more FinTech competent. Okay, put it in this way. So a fun little example, particularly related to API and data is what we call the commercial data interchange, which is helping a lot of banks to access to the alternate data that they previously cannot access to. So they actually collect the data from all these uh, different types of company through a platform. So if you're a traditional bank, now you have more data to access the credit uh, uh, by making use of data to access the credit risk. So they, you can make the loan before. Before that, probably you have to ask the SME for collaterals. This time you can make use of the data to build a model and then you can calculate the risk and then can loan the money to them. Right, so those are the things that uh, Hong Kong MA is doing so good at this point of time. Last but not least is the customer-centric API design. I know you guys are very competent in terms of technologies, uh, but not necessarily really understand the customer. So if we do not understand the customer, well, whatever how genius you are, it's very difficult to get buy-in from your company or your client to support your project, right? Whether you're internal developers, or your developers serving different clients, you have to increase or enhance your customer centricity. So look at this one, right? Most bank focus, most companies are focusing on internal APIs because it will cut costs and boost efficiency. But today you look at this report from McKinsey, it's very important for us to start to focus more on customer engaging APIs. You look at the competitors, what they do, and the traditional company, what they do. The differences is where the, the APIs are, are positioning to. You look at one of the example, one of the famous supermarket, uh, Wegmans. They open the API to the third parties, so a camera apps. So they actually uh, connect the API with the uh, supermarket. So uh, the supermarket guys they can provide the printer. So whenever a, a customer have the apps and hit the button, they can print their photos in any one of their wheelprints. So the good thing is 
they draw the traffic into the physical supermarket. So the people, besides to the print the photo, they also will grab a pop, uh, some popcorns, some uh, peanuts, uh, soft drink, and things like that. So it actually increase the sales. The other thing I would like to bring out is engagement is not only customer, but also engage with developers. It's in sync with what Patrick talked about, the developer community. So we have to treat customer very importantly, understand the pain point, create a business model, so can address the, the needs. On the other hand, the same thing. We should treat developer as customers as well. So we can uh, provide uh, you know good things for them to, to do their jobs. And also we need to measure API impact. So not just the activity, how many you know activity you generate. You should make it as the business impact KPI. So when you are putting together a business case to do a KPI a API project, you have to uh, find out the impact based KPI. So this is some of the example I give you, right? So it's very important to do that. And once you have the business impact. Uh, KPI, then you can prioritize which API project you should go first, right? Without this business impact KPI, it's very difficult to prioritize. And at the end of the day, uh, whether you success or not successful deliver the project, your impact is not good enough to build your credit for the next project. I'll give you a last example before I, uh, you know, adjourn. This first one is the DBS, right? Some of you know that DBS actually opened up a very important strategy is API. So uh, the most important thing is not for the sake of API. They want to make the customer journey joyful, but embed all these financial services in customer journey, right? So your thinking is definitely from the customers, their journey rather than from how technical you are, right? So the, 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 the dilemma is how good you are in terms of understanding the customer journey. So when the marketing people talk to you about customer journey, how good are you in able to understand and question and debate before you actually write the API, right? And the other hand is you do not do it alone. You can collaborate with the ecosystem. Right, so API. There's so many APIs around, so many startups around, so many good companies as well. How we can collaborate with the ecosystem is very important. And look at HSBC, right? So um, definitely, uh, uh, Patrick, no more than me. <clears throat> they're doing a lot of things uh, together with ScienceSpark. It's the API Eco Booster. Uh, it's a program to uh, you know collaborate with a lot of startups uh, to do a lot more uh, services. Uh, address the customer needs, even the spring account. And look at Citibank and look at all these virtual banks around. They are actually collaborating with the uh, uh, startups around making use of API. The last example is uh, very close to Hong Kong. Everybody know about Hong Kong TV more, particularly in the COVID-19. So uh, they are doing well in the e-commerce area. More importantly, I think I like this point. They open up that data. They have the open data strategy. So basically, Ricky Wong, the group CEO, they, they believe that uh, if we open up the data, they did already, to allow all these third party, including their competitor, can use it. The pie, the market is actually even bigger because you can innovate something that's never any single company can do. So this is a very good uh, initiative. I hope to encourage if you are enterprise yourself trying to think about this strategy. Should you open your data to the third party so everybody can make use of it at the end of the day, customer will be much, much happier and the market will be much, much bigger, right? So three key theories for today. One is rather than focusing on tech, focusing on how good you are to understand the customer journey. The second thing is the data and API can empower the value co-creation with the ecosystem. But last but not least, customer engagement is the core of API. So I hope these three key points will help you, stimulate you to think of, through about uh, from other perspective. This is my contact point. You can always go to my LinkedIn to see what I'm doing every day. And also you can communicate with me through WeChat or emails. Thank you so much. I pass it back to Patrick. Thank you.
Okay, thanks, uh, Doctor Chom to uh, share about the the ov overview of the API and data ecosystem. So, uh, we we still have two minutes left. So maybe one question. So we all love um here uh, uh, to understand about the common challenges. So from your experience, uh, when he's talking about the data or API collaboration, so ignore the technical perspective and assuming they are also very customer focused, then um. Is, is, do you have any tips when, when there's uh, some part, part uh, with different culture work together? Do you have one or two tips to them? Because I, I think there's some enterprise and sub here. Mm -mm. Okay, very good point, Patrick. I think it's very important to do the alignment, right? When you start a project, you probably have the, uh, your team might have some technical people and business people uh, all together, right? So particularly today, we talk about the uh, swarm and all that uh, methodology. So very importantly, do you have a common objective? Is that common objective have the business case that we talk about is customer focus, right? So you, you, you have to have an objective and also what is your expected outcome? Can you quantify it, right? So if you have an objective, which is very customer oriented and you have specific KPI, not necessarily financial, it could be customer engagement, could be um, you know, um, customer satisfaction. So you align with the outcome of your project, align with the objective. That will solve a lot of uh, argument and debates. You still have debates, definitely it's useful, right? But at the end of the day, you want to align back to the objective and outcome you want to achieve. That's one thing. And on the other hand, if you can do that, if it's success, then you build the trust from for each other and also for your senior management, for your clients. So you can be able to have more sponsors for the next project. So the alignment, I think, is very important. The second challenge, I would say, that is the data literacy. So uh, you are writing API, probably you do good in coding. If you are from marketing side, you're good in business, but no, not necessarily good in data. So it's very important to enhance your data literacy. That means you should be able as a citizen data scientist. We're not talking about data scientists, which you need to be a big PhD or something. Citizen data scientists is the people can understand, can communicate, can debate with data. So how to play around the big data and how to visualize it, how to convince, how to tell a story uh, based on data. So those are the two things I would like to uh, bring out to you, Patrick. Yeah, thanks. I think these tips to be very useful for our audience. And uh, thanks again for Dr. Trump's uh, uh, support on the event from your business time. So uh, thanks again. So i uh, see you soon. Uh, we will go, you. go to another section. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.